Hey, welcome to the homestead of Flat Rock. I'm Dave Goodyear. Today we're going to do a tour of the greenhouse. Uh, I've had a few requests with COVID and everything on the go. It's a little hard to have people come by, but uh, there's no reason not to be able to film it, I guess. So let's walk on down to the greenhouse. So the green, greenhouse is a four season structure. Uh, we grow in it four seasons of the year. The actual greenhouse itself really only sees about three seasons inside. It's never really ever winter, I would say. Here's a picture of the greenhouse here. I'm standing in front of it. And the glazing angle and stuff's fairly, it was fairly simple to build. I set up a glazing angle of 45 degrees. That works out to be about maximum sunlight. Oh, I don't know, maybe kind of middle February, something like that which actually ends up being our coldest month here in Newfoundland on the Avalon. This is what it looks like inside. It's pretty full here now. And I'm transitioning to growing some summer things. Um, for example, this is a garlic bulbill project that I have on the go with two other guys, uh, propagating 15,000 garlic. So as I move down towards the end, this is where I'll start first. Um, so this is just a potting area. And, you know, it's functional. Um, you know, fairly big, expansive area, places to store things. Uh, even some place for garlic to creep in if you have it grown. Uh, you know, seedlings, seedling trays. Uh, lots of ample storage down below, down here. The other thing, of course, I was looking at doing was adding you know plumbing to this uh, this structure but it was quite hard given the distance from the house so instead I had to install this big I guess water tank uh, so I just fill that up manually when it uh, when it empties and in the summer I probably go through one of these about once a week it's about 200 liters this time of the year not so much uh, over here behind me uh, basically just a pump set up that feeds uh, drip lines those drip lines go through this half inch line here and they go around the front of the greenhouse basically at the bottom of the knee wall all the way along I don't use it actually that much on the timer I find that it's more awkward to use than just hand watering but in the winter I do come in every now and then and turn it on for four or five minutes every four to five days plants in the in the winter don't tend to need a whole lot of water they do this time of the year but but not normally in the middle of winter so one thing about the structure is that there's a lot of fans in here and the reason why is really the key to the structure and being able to grow through the winter involves the use of a GAT or a ground air, air heat exchange system which is really just a heat exchanger sitting underground. So it's a, it's a whole bunch of pipes. They run underground. And when it gets above a certain temperature in here, air enters this plenum above. Uh, there's one on either end. And the temperature up there now is probably somewhere around 25 Celsius. It goes down through this uh, centrifugal fan and it's pumped underground. And it goes in through a plenum passes through the ground and then comes out in another plenum about here and through this fan. Uh, this time of the year it's ample for cooling um, but as the summer goes on I guess and we get into you know hotter days like today for instance is 14 outside you know we got about 13 kilowatts worth of sun coming in here uh, but it's holding temperature at well, it looks like about 20, 21 to 23, which is actually pretty good. Uh, in the middle of summer, of course, that differential is going to go up. Um, so I switch over to growing tomatoes and, and, and other, I guess, crops like peppers and whatnot in the summertime. So all that being said, we still need fresh air somehow. So um, basically, there, there's a balanced two-fan system. Um, this guy up here actually evacuates, uh, I guess, air in here that, that, that's humid. 
and this cuts in when the temperature also gets above what the GAT can handle. So if the GAT can't keep it cool in here, this guy kicks in and says, you know what, I'm going to start pushing this warm air outside because we can't, we can't store it all. And this guy actually runs in balance with this one below that comes up out of the earth. Um, and this is really one of the key mechanisms here for bringing in cold air in the winter. So normally in the winter, it's, uh, it's you know, we, we don't get days that are very much below minus five really, but it's still enough that it would cool down this greenhouse substantially. So on warm days like this, um, that air outside actually passes through about a hundred feet of perforated drain pipe underground. Um, it goes around the footing of the building and it actually comes up outside through a stub up that's always above the snow level. So basically we preheat all the air that comes in and the system is actually balanced against the exhaust fan so that we're never ever really depressurizing the building and it actually makes the door and stuff really really easy. Um, so it, it's better for the structure in the long run because we wouldn't be forcing, let's say, or pulling cold air in through the walls and wherever other places it would want to come in from. Uh, so anyway, that's that's pretty much, I guess, the, the particulars of the greenhouse. What, what am I growing? Uh, well, in the winter, I grow mainly Asian greens. I find that they tend to grow really, really well uh, compared to a lot of things in winter. And I mean, I'm not looking at keeping the space heated. I'm looking at keeping the space you know from freezing and really that's the purpose of the gat here in in the winter but i'm able to keep the structure above five celsius and what i've determined is that it's not actually temperature that actually is, is a problem here in the winter it's actually the amount of light that we get so our i guess daylight hours are somewhere you know it go it goes i think it dips below nine hours which means the plants are pretty much dormant and uh, really what that means is that you kind of need to plan out how big your plants are by the time Persephone comes which is at the end of October so that they're almost fully grown and then you'd pick off them so we did that in the first year and it worked quite well but I realized that you know it's easy to get active growth if you're at 5 Celsius on a lot of these things um, and some of these things will even germinate down as low as 5 so the way around that of course is to add um, extra light so I have this light uh, which is from Migro and um, it provides about I think 600 and you know 50 ppfd uh, from what I recall it's enough to boost up the daily light integral on this so that the greens actively grow and um, we're able to, to, to actually actively grow in here during that period when the daylight is decreasing down to December the 21st and then increasing back up to somewhere you know in February where we're getting enough daylight hours that in fact the plants are actually uh, you know they're actually actively growing so what else have I grown in here I've grown fig trees in here I got this fig actually planted it's starting to bud now um, and my plan for this is a small espalier to, to kind of boost production I end up with a fig last year on this which was pretty impressive uh, for Newfoundland that is um, strawberry plants these guys have been overwintered um, we've used to pick maybe I don't know maybe 10 or 20 strawberries a week you know they're day neutral varieties so they'll they'll produce all year as long as the temperature is up but they really would benefit from a little bit of light so I have four of these uh, some more guys planted this stuff is all actively growing now I mean you can see the flowers we wouldn't see strawberries here until at least the end of June or middle of July but by the looks of this I'll probably have strawberries in here maybe oh, I don't know maybe another two, two weeks and it's uh, so you know sometime in April so two three months ahead of uh, what I'd expect uh, has gaps uh, these guys are actually meant for outdoors but they were only plugs last year so I decided to keep them in here uh, just to get them going and this is what's basically grown all of this here in the past several weeks and they have some berries and stuff on them what else do I grow I grow uh, Salanova Salanova is a great great lettuce it grows in here really really nicely in the winter um, it does slow down a lot when uh, there's no 
light, I guess, but but now that we have lots of daylight hours, it's, it's actually doing quite well. Fun gin is another thing that I grow. It grows amazingly quick. It's an Asian leafy green. Um, it's a half good substitute for lettuce, but it it's, it's just crazy how fast that it grows. So for us, a lot of the things that we grow are based on, you know, being able to crop it out and eat it uh, kind of, you know, in a very quick period of time because we eat out of this every day. Um, bok choys, so we have, this guy is a joy choy, which is a nice, uh, so it's a white stem choy. This is a uh, meeking choy. This is a, uh, a green stem choy. This is really nice. Uh, have some guy land here. And uh, this is a Sulu lettuce. It's great lettuce and it grows really well in here through the through the, the winter and right now in the greenhouse it's it's pretty much summer it's pretty much summer I mean all of my this this is this is a, um, a brassica it's a uh, well mustard uh, mizuna and it's flowering so I'm trying to capture some seeds from this guy and I'm just gonna let it uh, let it seed out see what happens no pollinators in here I'm I'm the pollinator so I just come in I give these guys a shake uh, hoping that that's that's going to be enough um, to save me a little bit on on seed uh, cilantro we grow cilantro right on through the winter so this is new stuff seeded several weeks ago uh, but it's getting pretty warm in here for it now so you can see what was seeded kind of before Christmas and we've been picking off of this is already starting to bolt this is one of the indicators of a bolting right you know we're losing some of the leafiness and it's starting to become stringy and high it's a matter of time before this goes to seed, and I'm going to try to collect the seed from that too. So, do we use anything other than the GAT for heating? Well, I'll say no, but uh, there is an emergency heater installed, uh, which is a 240 volt, um, three, 4,000 watt heater, and it's just hooked up to a small thermostat. You can see actually that the thermostat, you know, it's just an analog thermostat, it's actually turned off. Um, but you know I haven't had this on the winter actually I, I turned it off and I just let the GAT do all the work uh, for controlling lighting it's a pretty simple system we just use a torque at astronomical timer it's a uh, uh, they're I mean they're a few hundred bucks but you know it's a, it's a nice timer it has uh, circuitry built in for switching and we can program those lights to just provide you know daylight extension so in essence it comes on an hour before we have I guess um, you know before sunset and then it goes off at 8 p.m. so it gives us a photo period in the winter of somewhere around uh, 10 10 hours or so 10 to 12 hours I think altogether compounded with the fact of course that our uh, you know our, our winters are pretty cloudy I think December's our cloudiest month and you know we're talking about maybe seeing a few hours of sunlight um, although we have daylight it's very diffuse um, so having a little bit of light to actually boost some of those plants temperatures at five degrees you know they actively grow fine anyway that's pretty much a tour of my greenhouse uh, I think I got everything uh, like I said I was hoping that I'd be able to get in-person tours done the summer but I don't think it's going to happen with, uh, with COVID on the go. But in any case, uh, here you go. That's the tour.